Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. Alright guys, so today I'm doing a review that I honestly didn't think I was going to do. If you guys saw one of my anti-hauls as well as a will I buy it, my most recent one, I do believe, you would have seen me talking about not being interested in purchasing the Naked Reloaded from Urban Decay. Now, I stood by that, then any of you guys who are following me on Twitter, I was thinking Twitter, but it's not Twitter, it's Snapchat, you would have seen me snap been like, like, girls, should I do it? Because I saw it in store, and I feel like seeing it in person gives you a better vibe of what the colors really are than any of the pictures I've seen online. And I don't know if it was the mall atmosphere, the Sephora lighting, whatever, but it was just kind of like, hmm, I was returning something, and I was like, you know what? We'll give it a try. This bad boy is $44, which is pretty standard for the naked palette price. It is not limited edition as it is a replacement of the original Urban Decay Naked Palette. Well, we'll be getting into some of that as well. And it is what I am wearing on my papers today. Now, I did... I did have to go in to another palette to finish deepening this up, but before we get into any of my thoughts and comparisons, because this is a review, but we're also going to be doing a little bit of a palette dissection, because when this came out, a lot of people made the comparison that they're like, oh, so basically it's the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palette, and there are a lot of similarities, but right now let's just swatch it bring in it y'all in closer here i will say i will say i hate, hate this packaging it's like 1990s puffy silky satiny fabric it just it just feels really really cheap i do appreciate the fact that they nixed giving us a brush that makes it a much more sleeker component but i just i just it feels very flimsy and i'm not a fan of this whole like fabric whateverness we are just gonna go on down they did one thing that like a component they changed is they're like oh well we made we took the shades that you're going to use you know the most and made them bigger kind of like you know Kat Von D how she's got those three ones up top that usually doesn't mean anything for me because they're talking about you know this is gonna be a setting shade that's gonna be a setting shade or a highlight whatever brow bone that's usually not how I do my makeup so it's kind of a non sequitur for me but anyway this one here is going to be bribe going on right there they are powdery we know urban decay then we've got barely baked right here and then we have angel fire right here which is what I have on my inner corner it is fairly I mean that's gonna be whoo, right there and then we got that one right there and then this one it does it's kind of a glittery effervescent top coat shade that is going to need a base or a glitter glue or a tacky primer otherwise you're going to get glitter flying all around in the atmosphere next up is retro which is what i started just all out and everywhere this shade i just jagged myself with my nail then reputation which is what i have on this area right here then this one here is burn oh here we've got these ones right here very smoothy smooth next here is end game which was my second to last shade on this outer darkening this going on right here dream weaver which like angel fire is more of like a top effervescent top coat glittery whatever then distilled right here which is a really pretty like con how do you c-o-g-n-a-c cognac cognac brown color so we got it right there here and here this one is kind of like a faint of color there if you're gonna want any of that sparkle to show up you are gonna want to use a glitter glue i do recommend the nyx glitter glue because that stuff is like 
spackle. Then last but not least, we have Bucked, which is what I started off with Retro, and then I went in with Bucked right here. Then we have Boundaries, which is such a smooth feeling matte and then blur right here which is also I find that the two mattes on either side of the palette are the most powdery so here we have those right here all right you can't see that one very well it is lighter and that's kind of a crappy swatch but here we have the color spectrum going on here you are getting one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve shades you're getting one two three four five six six and a half mattes which you guys know that for me you know i say if i say it once i'm gonna say it again the backbone of a palette is made up by its mats. All right, let's get down and dirty here. Just going from a quality standpoint, it's okay. Urban Decay, as I have grown and developed in like my makeup tastes, they do not have my favorite eyeshadow formula, either for matte or for shimmers, unless it's something like, say, the Urban Decay Electric Palette. But the mattes are nice and pigmented. They blended out nicely. I didn't find any muddiness or patchiness. The shimmers are okay. For some reason, Urban Decay tends to have like kind of chunkier, you know, not as just cha 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 shimmers, like say the ones from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance or the, not Sultry palette, the, um, the Soft Glam or the Riviera palette, where if you guys are familiar with that, it's a very smooth, very buttery, just kind of one swipe opaque. These are just a little bit more chunky and a little bit more textured. These two shades right here, Angel Fire and Dream Weaver, are gonna be just kind of a little thin layer of color with glitter suspended through it if you want that real high shine do use a tacky primer a wet concealer or a glitter glue now let's talk about the palette sort of in a comparison and contrast with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry as kind of drawing some lines between the naked palette as a was this a smart move for Urban Decay to discontinue this palette and reintroduce this I figured we'd start with the sultry palette so let's do the color layout here we've got the palette side by side there is a very real kind of just like similarity between the two bribe and fresh are basically the same Pearl is a significantly better version of Angel Fire. Retro, the big comparison people had was the Retro and the Bloom shade. Retro is more of a, like, Burp Squad. Is more of a peach, whereas Bloom is skewing more toward a blood orange color. Endgame and Dystopian, Blocked, Bucked, Bucked, and Birch, then Twig. You know, there are a lot of similarities between this palette. However, and I am going to be just a little biased because I do prefer the Anastasia formula over most formulas, so do take that with a grain of salt depending on which formula you're more familiar with and which you prefer. This is just my opinion. I feel like the Sultry palette honestly gives you a bit more to work with than the Reloaded palette, not just in the sense of in this one, you are getting 12 shades, and in this one you're getting 14. That's two more shades, but I feel like even more shades aside, just on a whole with the color story and the things that they provide you with, this one is just a more eclectic palette. Case in point, this is the palette that I pulled out to sort of finish deepening up my look. I dipped into the Noir Black here because this palette, really, you can go all the way to end game, but 
that's about it. And if you want something like really deep and whatever, I feel like Urban Decay could have maybe, maybe passed on one of these two end shades and given a black so that it would just be able to add more depth and dimension to a look and make it just a bit more versatile. I feel like it also should be noted that this palette skews a little bit more warm and neutral, whereas this one is more of the neutral cool tone. So people who've been, you know, we've been seeing a lot of comparisons between these two. There is that difference. But I would definitely say if you already have this palette, there is absolutely no need to purchase this palette. And if you are kind of torn or questioning between the two, I would recommend this one more, not just because I like the formula more, but because I feel like this is a palette that you can do more with. Not that this isn't a nice palette, I'm kind of still on the fence about whether I want to return it, but simply because I like the matte formula better, the shimmer formula is just so much better. You guys know how I feel about the Anastasia Beverly Hills Shimmer Formula. So my kind of approval stamp, whatever, is if you're like, whatever in between these two, go for this one instead of this one. I think you will get a lot more use out of it. But from a quality standpoint, this one is just pretty standard Urban Decay quality. Not amazing, not horrible. Then let's sort of address the elephant in the room. This is the OG, the Urban Decay Naked Palette, which has been discontinued. She's gone, she has left the building. And then this is sort of what Urban Decay has provided for us as a new installment in the Naked family. Now you guys know one of my pet peeves with the earlier Naked palettes is the fact that you are getting two mattes. Naked and a buck right here, and then sort of kind of a like, uh, that matte with a little bit kind of satininess with some glitter thrown in there. So just from that sense, and considering the fact that most people don't tend to do all shimmer looks, you would think that the versatility on this palette in comparison would be better simply due to the formula breakdown. I honestly disagree simply because if you look here, I mean, you have the gradient going from the light to kind of the darker, the different color tone family. I honestly feel that the original Naked palette has more to offer on a level of versatility than the Naked Reloaded. If you have either the Sultry palette or even if you have the Naked Cherry or the Naked Heat, I feel like this palette is just sort of a non-necessity. So all in all, I feel like Urban Decay would honestly have done better going with a color scheme more like this, changing it up, giving us more mattes, but giving us more something along these lines than being like, let's bring out something that's super similar to stuff we've recently released, as well as being super similar to something that someone else has released. But that is just my personal opinion. I've given my thoughts on everything. This palette, it's okay. It's, you know, for some reason, Urban Decay, it just, I just don't feel that they are like the end all be all when it comes to eyeshadows like they used to be. So the quality is all right. The variety is Okay, um, I do have issues with these two shades right here. I wish they could have given us something a little bit deeper and darker that would have made this palette a bit more versatile and would have made it also better to be more inclusive to deeper complexions that aren't, you know, a shade of white. Definitely not the most thrilling release from Urban Decay. But like I said, that is obviously just my opinion. If you have this palette, definitely let me know what you feel about it down below. I know that a lot of people have been loving it, and I understand that there are a lot more neutral lovers out there. I am kind of a, you know, I'm okay with doing neutrals every once in a while, but you guys know I definitely prefer a bit more bright or kind of even in the darker spectrum. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, and as always, keep it real. Mwah!